okay? But that's not obviously what the context is. The context is uh, you're having a you're in the process of shipwreck here. There's a big storm. Hello. And and the apostle is saying, "Don't worry. Everyone will live through this. They'll be alive on shore when right. this is over. No souls will be lost." Again, it's not an eternal thing. It's life. It's life. It's this life, the, this breathing, living uh, experience that we have right now. So, Jonathan, as we continue through this, folks, if you have a thought, it is 860-442-6102. That's 442-6102. Again, let's back up for a second, and let's look at the Halloween picture and uh, the idea of what happens from the ancient pagan traditions of, of, of trying to communicate with the dead and, you know, we've got the, the, the All Saints Day and All Souls Day that are an honoring or a praying for the dead. And what we're saying is, in both of those cases, that the dead are just that. Dead. They're, they're dead. Okay? So, how do you, how do you, there, there's, there's, it's not an easy thing to come to an understanding of, especially because for most of us, it is a given. You know, and I meant to bring it with me. There was the uh, cover story of um, U.S. News and World Report uh, was something about the human soul. And I meant to bring it with me this morning and I forgot it. But uh, just the idea of the soul as being a spiritual being or a spiritual entity is just commonly accepted. And what we're saying is that's not the case. Exactly. According to scriptural definition. Yep. Okay, let's take a look at some New Testament reasoning that the soul can be destroyed and is not immortal. Now, think about that phrase. We're saying the soul is not immortal. Immortal means unable to be, uh, unable to have your life taken from you. Mm -hmm. When you are immortal, that means whatever happens... Deathless. Right, that's better. Deathless. See, it was so easy to say it. (laughs) (laughs) You are deathless. Good. All right, Matthew 10, 28. And fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Now, a couple of things on that scripture. First of all, that word for hell is... The grave. Well, it, actually, this is Gehenna. Oh, that's Gehenna. Oh, okay. okay. Remember, this oh. is the garbage dump okay. outside of Jerusalem. The, the burning that d- never ceased. Right, right. The place where they kept the fires burning, they threw sulfur into the pit, and the reason they did that is because anything thrown in there was to be utterly consumed. Destruction. Right. It was, and that's what it was a picture of. It was a picture of, in Jesus' day, if he had mentioned Gehenna, or the Valley of Hinnom. Everyone would know what he's talking about. He was talking about the place where things were destroyed. And where it stunk. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, because you had the sulfur fires burning, you had all this stuff going on. And the other thing about it that, that was important, when Jesus talked about the Valley of Hinnom... Well, well, there's two things. One was the history. I'll get to that in a second. But the other thing was that the Jews did not allow the torture of any living thing. As a result, no living thing was ever thrown into that pit. Good point. Okay? And it was also used as a place of destruction for the bodies of particular criminals. So That, that didn't deserve a burial, right. basically. And that would have been a tremendous disgrace. Because they would have not been honored in their burial, but their body would have been thrown into the garbage pit. I mean, even when you say that, you know, when, when, how do you feel when, when you hear stories of, you know, some, some teenage girl has a, has a baby and they find the baby in the garbage or they find Uh, the baby in the incinerator or wherever uh, they, you know, you, you get that sense of, you know, awful. Right. Well, the same kind of sense, in that case it's innocence, obviously, but here you have this dead body thrown in there to be consumed and, and sort of as a symbol of the memory of them should be gone. So when Jesus was talking about the Valley of Hinnom, that's what he was talking about. There was no torture there, ever. It was furthest from the, the, the Jewish thinking at that point in time. The reason that particular valley was chosen to be this place where this garbage dump, remember the story? In the Old Testament, about the about them, uh, the, the sins of the people when they were starting to sacrifice their children. Oh yeah, that's right. To, to the the god Baal. To Molech. Molech. That's right. Molech. Yeah. And what was happening is they had been so taken by these these pagan beliefs that they started this ritualistic sacrificing of live children, burned them. Oh yeah, that's right. And God's response to that. That was sick. Was exactly. 
that is there that is sick this valley should be put aside as a place of destruction i don't even want to give this this land the 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 opportunity to bring forth life because of the heinous sins that were committed there so when jesus mentioned the valley of hinnom everybody knew the history and everybody knew what it was used for so when he says that the that your soul your being is able to be destroyed in the valley of hinnom that would have been a scary thought oh yeah because Good it was point. utter complete total annihilation destruction no torture but destruction folks if you have a thought it is 860-442-6102 that's 442-6102 and rick we're reading scriptures that the showing that the soul can be destroyed and is not immortal let's read acts 3 verse 23 And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear the prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Well, that pretty much says it now, doesn't it? It does. Okay, the soul that doesn't hear that prophet will be destroyed from among people. It doesn't say tortured. It doesn't say he's going to go on to some other kind of uh, consequence. It talks about, now it it, it says it shall come to pass. It's talking about a future time. It's a prophecy, but it's also saying that there is going to be destruction of those who inevitably at the end are not going to be in compliance. During the judgment period. Right, right. James 5.20 Let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Save a soul from... Death. Okay, it's pretty simple. Okay, so if a soul can die, as these scriptures have been saying, then it doesn't have inherent life in it. 1 Peter 3.20 Which some... Time were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. Okay, so you had these eight souls saved and the other souls were destroyed. Their lives right. were and, saved. And, and so you go back to that account and that's exactly what, what you will see. And it's interesting because it's talking about eight souls. It's talking about the Genesis account of the flood and the same. Again, you have the, the Greek word and the Hebrew word are exactly the same. Uh, Fred, why don't we hit, hit the break right at this point. Folks, we're talking about is Halloween happy, and we're looking at it very much from a scriptural standpoint of what happens when you die. And we'll get back to the happy Halloween thing after the break. This is Jonathan and Rick with Christian Questions on News Talk 102.3 FM WXLM. Stay with us. <laughs> 